And are you refreshed? Yes. Good. Now what? Hello. This is a statement about a love affair that I have with my appreciation for perspective. Yeah. <sighs> perspective matters a lot, doesn't it? It's everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's the most important tool of a deliberate creator. Thank you. <laughs> so imagine a time when you grew up and all you knew was the people around you were doing things that you didn't understand and you were counting them on them to do the right thing and you didn't know until you were 30 that they weren't doing the right thing. And so I was giving someone the example of the life of all the things that had sort of manifest, good and bad. When I was 30, I was able to sort of turn it upside down. And then it came to the realization that perspective was that turn and appreciation was for the, all those things that were the good foundation that was the sticky part. All the bad things were sort of like this, like trash that was just there. Layered on top, it looked like it was a foundation, but it really wasn't, it was sort of like loose. And so after it, the perspective, act, as the world changed, I toppled, I went upside down, all the bad stuff just fell away. <laughs> we started to say to you, even earlier that when you come into alignment with who you are so that the perspective that you are offering is in sync with that broader perspective that's always what happens in fact any other perspective is really not of very much value now you're asking us for something that we've been wanting to give in this format for a while and so we think that you are going to enjoy this conversation about perspective because we're going to take thought just a little bit beyond what perhaps you have considered before. When you make the decision to come into this physical experience, not one of you asks for a feathered nest. You all come knowing that the variety that surrounds you is what's going to cause the expansion of your own vortex and ultimately the satisfaction of your own life experience. So often after you get here, you tell a little bit different story. You would like a little bit more feathered nest, but from your broader perspective, the thing that you are most reaching for is the expansion of you. So one of the things, in fact, maybe the thing that trips more people up than all other things put together is that as they are observing what's going on around them, they feel some sort of need eventually to try to control those conditions, which of course they cannot do. So when we are talking about the laws of the universe, these consistent, understandable, in time, easily applicable laws of the universe, we want to point out the difference between a master of that and the way most people are living. So most people who are not taking the receptive mode into consideration at all, most people know that they want to feel good, but they don't believe that they have any control over that. So they give the people around them the control of how they feel. So most conversations, whether it is 10 years before or 20 years before now, or even now in your experience, most conversations that most adults have about most things has nothing to do with receptive mode. Instead, they are talking about the things that have come from thoughts and the rightness or the wrongness of those things that came from thoughts. So almost every conversation that you hear, every analysis, political, whatever, every book that is written nearly on nearly every subject, what people are talking about are the things that have come from the thoughts, but hardly anybody's talking about the thoughts that caused the things. 
So they argue about what proper parenting is. They argue about what the right situation for a child to be born into is. They argue about the way to treat a woman or the way to treat her man. Just all of these opinions as they are looking at situations and conditions and trying to come up with the right way to live the right way to be healthy the right way to the right way the right way. and so in all of that conversation what we want to be respectful of you in your ignorance of the laws of the universe but we want to say all of that is blah 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 until someone is considering the perspective of their relationship with their broader knowing then you can't possibly receive an impulse that is good timing or that is well placed you can't understand anything about anything it's just opinions and polls and voting and arguing and contesting and rebelling that's the way so much of the world is living because they don't have this one little part of the equation clear in their mind now as you have said to us through your example here life can bring a wise man to that perspective you can live enough life and have enough experience to come to know that there is another factor that once you accomplish it then things start clicking into place in a stronger way and that certainly is what you've come to realize and you've helped us to say what we've been meaning to say for a while which is unless you are tending to your receptive mode anything that you are viewing about the things that have come from thoughts it would be like sitting to do those long division problems and never taking the time never taking the time to really learn the times tables or the underpinning of it and trying and failing 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 because you just can't get there from there until finally you then pronounce yourself unworthy or incapable or wrong or whatever and you missed the entire point so we are appreciating that you came to the place Jerry said that about his life experiences he would sometimes recount those early experiences but from where he is standing now he was appreciative of every one of them because he recognized that without each and every one of them then he would not have the understanding that he has now and likes the understanding that he has now it's a wonderful realization isn't it and isn't it empowering really empowering you're gonna like this not only to not need anybody in your current world to be different than they are in order for you to have the clarity and the empowerment and the love and the appreciation of life that you must have but isn't it nice that nobody in your past has to go back and have lived something differently either oh there's such freedom in that and we started to interrupt you just as you first began because we wanted to put this little piece of it in as you were talking about how they were not doing the right things and you didn't even know at the time that they were not doing the right things we want to revel in their determination for their freedom to not comply they were already there and it takes most everybody a long time to get there but their life before you got there had already shown them what do you comply with you comply with the irrational you comply with the rigid you comply with the one who has the biggest pulpit or the loudest voice to shout with what is the right thing to comply with and there are a whole lot of people that are called rebels that are called criminals that are called outcasts who have come to what we think is a triumphant understanding before they are labeled any of those things which is you do not you cannot not only is it that you do not need to you cannot you cannot be a pleaser because who do you decide is the one to be pleased what laws are the just laws we say virtually none of them what laws are the just laws because you didn't come to follow a pattern that someone else with other intentions or other experiences established for you you came to 
find your alignment with your broader perspective who will lead you to the creation of your unique life and world and those who do not know that are standing in frightened corners everywhere around the world because they know you have shown them that they cannot contain you you've been rebellious in so many ways they get it they're getting it that they cannot contain you they don't have bombs big enough to keep you from doing what you mean to do and we wish for all of them the freedom that comes from the discovery of your own empowerment and your own empowerment only is within you once you understand what you're trying to align with what you're trying to align with it's from within you and most humans are going to be so surprised first ha 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 and delighted when you re-emerge into non-physical and discover the absence of judgment and rules that is being presented from there you are free agents and you are divinely inspired in your unique and important individuality as i get up i want to share with you the most powerful thing that you have done at least for this small little speck of a human it is that you've taught me to only do the things that make me happy and one more thing i also have this feeling of the, the, the speed that goes so fast when i sing and when i hear others sing and I would like to talk about the power of the voice and how this instrument, the larynx, is so complex and can do so many things. And my real question underneath is, are there more things than we don't know? Yes, so many more. There's so much potential. Can we talk about that? And you know some masters who have accomplished things that seem unbelievable but in every case if you were to know them you would know that they found some way of getting in the receptive mode and that's just their dominant way of being especially when they do that in other words that's what Esther is meaning when she is preparing herself for you she takes this very seriously in that she knows that she is the vortex through the valve through which you are going to hear the clarity of Abraham and she wants to make sure that she's in that clear space so that what you want can be received and she knows that she's not always like that but when she comes to a situation like this she makes sure that she does her best to be right there and so the other day she was thinking well I sure will do it for all of them and I sure will do it for Abraham and we want her to say I sure will do that for myself I will do that for the joy of clarity and so this subject is all about vibration isn't it and is there a subject that you can feel more the vibration the actual vibration that is turned into a thing than the vibration that is in music in other words when you are tuned in tapped in turned on and you allow your evolution of your apparatus and the intuition is there anything more delightful than to be a group of musicians who are free flowing with one another who are not necessarily reading a score or reading the music on a page but are receiving the part that they will play in the greater group of others who are also tuned in and often those people are together for a long time in those jazz groups or in those free-flowing groups because they are allowing the broader perspective to flow through them it's like the birds that are flying in the sky in a flock they don't have a leader that's calling out orders and telling everybody where to get where they are all in tune with that broader knowing and that broader knowing is guiding the flock and that's what is available to all of you you have the ability to in concert work with all other humans on the planet you have the ability to harmonize just like you do in a vocal group or just like you do with music that your own singular voice with the music that is being played by some instrument you all have the ability to harmonize but you got to get into that broader perspective so that you know what the components are that you are harmonizing with Ooh, you are so fortunate to be physical beings in this time space reality out here on this leading edge of all of this getting to turn your magnificent thoughts into magnificent things and understand how it is done so there's no mystery there's no injustice there's no sense of not understanding what's going on you just get to apply and see and apply and see think and feel and watch the results this is a really good time for a segment of refreshment